I got to deny the Lord here. Yes, sir. How are you today, man? You only have purple out here? You, you, I've got a several other colors down there if you prefer a different one. <laughs> I, I just That's the first one I grabbed. <laughs> Your day going well, man? Oh, I had to tell on myself this morning. Oh, it's got a little slide thing I had to here. tell on myself whenever I shared earlier before y'all got here. Okay. So at least I did that. I don't need to be hypocrite. I got you. Yeah, okay. How's it going, man? I love it. How would you answer that question? Uh, what are the options? Uh, the Bible is true, so some of it, all of it, or none of it? I go with some of it. Some of it, okay. So why do you say some of it? Mm -hmm. Why would you say some of it? Because uh, it makes some pretty big claims that okay. I, uh, you know, I, I can't believe in some of that. Okay, specifically what do you think you couldn't the whole, believe in? The whole God thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that would be yeah. a pretty big claim, right? It's the biggest one. Right. Yeah. So what, are, what do you think is the reason why you would say God doesn't exist? Um, well, or I'm do you so, say that? First of all, yeah, you yeah. say he doesn't exist or you do, don't know? I'm more so of the opinion that it, I don't know if a God exists. Okay, so agnostic. And any evidence out there, it hasn't convinced me that, you know, that's the case. Gotcha. So I wouldn't take that like Hard, gotcha. Negative stance. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I think Scripture is very plain in saying that the evidence does exist, and says that all of creation bears witness of the existence of God. His invisible power and attributes are all shown in creation. So think about this: the building over there. How did that building get here? We made it. Someone made it, right? There was a creator. There was a designer right. who designed that. And then to look around us at all the miracles we see in life, mm -hmm. to say that that just happened at random. Or happened by chance, you know. I say I see design everywhere. What do you think? Well, I know that we made that building because mm -hmm. we know that builders exist. Right. We know, like, we know that we create buildings, and so for any building, I can say that humans probably made that. Mm -hmm. But for any natural process like that grass, I can't just say that. So something. You, made so it. how would you say that it came about? Then? Well, we know that those came from seeds. Okay. Right. And you know where that's going. To go far back enough, I just, we can't get to an answer mm -hmm. just yet, I guess. You know, the best thing that we have so far is Big Bang, but that's, you know. Uh, Are you aware crazy. of the recent telescope discoveries that they've made with this new telescope that they put out here and how they found fully developed galaxies way out there further than what they thought? And originally Big Bang says those galaxies should not be as old and as developed as they are being so far away, uh -huh. but they're, uh, they've been there for uh, ages. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even the Big Bang Theory is getting some oh, yeah. <laughs> flack, uh, you know? Again, even even for, I mean, my, my entire, you know, position doesn't rest on the Big Bang being right. true. I'm just more so like, for people that are interested in what happened at the beginning of creation, they're doing good mathematical empirical work to go and figure that out. Whatever they're telling me is their current working mm, theory. Let me get, that's probably what I'm going to bla like gotcha. land on. Gotcha. You know? But that theory changes. Oh, yeah. 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 Totally yeah. changes. I mean, like, all of human understanding has changed. I right. mean, we used to believe that there were only four humors in the body, you know? And probably thousands of years into the future, they'll the things I believe currently will be out of date. Yeah. But yeah. my place isn't really to search for the big T truth, because I know I can't ever get to Right. Know. And so the Bible says, in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. That hasn't changed since the writing of the Bible. That's been there. It's, it's an assertion that's being made, right? right? But think about this. To say that all this just happened by some natural processes, basically to me is saying that you're looking at it and saying nothing created everything. Because where did the materials come from for those seeds and for like the I soil? Say that that came about through natural processes, but I never have to make the leap that something came from nothing. We're constantly investigating, trying to see what's going back there. But until we get an actual definitive origin of our universe, where it's like an ult or another multiverse crashing into ours or something like that, until we know that, I just I just can't say that I'm convinced. Right? Mm, got gotcha. you. Know, and to even say that, like, you know, heaven and the earth is created, I mean, I got to, like, now I got to, like, find a heaven, evidence of a heaven. You know, there's, there's a lot of tacked on things that I just can't bring myself to. Interesting. What's your name? Carlos. Carlos, I'm Daryl. Because it kind of sounds like the way you're believing is pretty much the same thing. You're having to tack something on here to account for this, and then eventually you have to tack something on to account for that. You see what I'm saying? You're, you're going to an infinite regress right here, philosophically, and eventually, you know, 
I think that would lead back to God. But, you know, again, we'll disagree on that, agree to disagree on that. I, I just look at things and I, I can't I can't make the leap, right? It's, it's more so like, okay, what do we know about this? I don't I'd look at like a blade of grass and assume, okay, that there is a heaven and there is a creation, right? I just look at, okay, this is a blade of grass. What, how did that come to be? And then you go with no preconceived, you know, notions. And yeah, I can't get to a beginning, right. but I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm thankful for your honest answers on that, that's yeah. for sure. Um, you know, here's another thing to think about, too. You think okay. about the DNA that's in your body, mm -hmm. right? There's enough DNA in your body, if you were to take it and put it end to end, it would go around the sun 22,000 times, yeah. right? Yeah. That DNA, every strand of it contains information, which determines who you are and what you look like, all these different features. Mm -hmm. How did the information for the DNA get there? How did the information, well... Because like with a computer, uh -huh. you know, you have to program right. to get the computer to do what you want to. I can't just go in and put jibbly jig, you know, whatever, yeah. in the computer and expect the program to come spitting out. Mm -hmm. And so that's information. Mm -hmm. Same thing with DNA. Our DNA has information, contains information. And so that information determines who I am. How did it get here? My current understanding is this. It took, from our best understanding, right, the Earth was around and able to habitate life for a while. But life didn't just pop up. It took a long time for life to start, but the moment it started, it started going crazy. Mm -hmm. So that um, relays to me that life, or what we think of as life, right? The, the DNA, the replication, all that. DNA, which then goes on to build organisms, it is a example of a natural process that tries to replicate itself. There's nothing about rocks that make it want to make more rocks, mm -hmm. right? But if you get the right conditions, the right number of molecules all in the same place, if you are able to make, or if something is able to come together, maybe out of you know a seemingly random process, but if at any point in time you start making a replication process, then from there on, it's like off to the races because then you know it starts going it starts doing its thing the moment that is brought into existence all other like replication processes that we know yeah. of determine from that mathematically what are the chances that all those things would come together at the right place in the right time 100 <laughs> percent. but i'm because saying you know it would universe. be astronomical you know what i'm saying no no it's actually 100 percent because we only have the one universe to compare mm -hmm. it to we live in the universe where everything is already happening mm -hmm. if we had other universes then i could say maybe like if i look at like nine million other universes and they're all devoid of life and they're all still be like wow this is pretty cool mm -hmm. but even then right even if the chances are that low all i know is that the chances are low mm -hmm. you know well if you think about it the position of our sun here in solar system in relative uh, position to the earth. Okay, yeah. if we were a thousand, or I'm, I'm just throwing out arbitrary number here, a thousand miles too close, right. it would be too hot. If we were a thousand miles further away, it would be too cold. Right. So we're here in the right area. I believe there's a scientist called it the Goldilocks principle. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah. the Goldilocks, everything is in perfect existence. Uh -huh. Why doesn't that point to the existence of a creator and designer? I feel like you can only take that statement to mean that we got lucky. Well, no, not you if know? you have someone who designed it and created it. Well, but now you can point <laughs> me to a yeah. designer and a creator. And right. I already told you that just because I see things, right. that doesn't point to a creator. That points to natural processes that we can investigate. Mm -hmm. And we could keep investigating, and maybe at the end of the tunnel there's a creator, but, yeah. you know. It's interesting because Paul made a statement in Romans chapter 1, uh -huh. and he talked about the fact that the truth, uh, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here, of everything that exists is known to man, okay. but in his unrighteousness, he chooses to suppress the truth. And so what that statement is essentially saying is, man does inherently know that there's a God, but chooses to suppress the truth of that because of their unrighteousness, because of their sin. Have you heard that statement before? Uh, I don't know if I've ever heard that statement before, but does that statement do us any good? Well, it just, you know, show, it just reports the true condition of our heart. See, our heart's in natural rebellion, right? Yeah. Did anybody ever have to teach you how to tell a lie when you were growing up? 
Um, no, I don't think I did. <laughs> Me neither, right? I mean, I did that the moment I thought I was going to get in trouble with my parents. You know, my heart said, okay, I'm going to lie about this so I don't get in trouble, which is not a very effective strategy because most of the time you get in trouble. Anyway, <laughs> so that particular verse and section of passage, it points out the fact that God, the existence of God is known to us. We just choose to suppress that truth. But then are you telling me that I'm lying? I'm not saying you're lying. I'm lying to myself. Uh, probably to yourself, more likely, yeah. But couldn't anyone say that about any other religion? It's possible, yeah. I feel like that statement, it, it doesn't do us like a utility in getting to a truth because it it relies on the fact that whoever you're talking to, that it resonates with them. Mm -hmm. And it could not resonate with them. Unless you are 100% committed to, I know everything, right, and everyone else is... Mm -hmm. Well, I think it gets back to this statement that's on the board, the Bible is true. Okay, now that's an assertion. That's a statement that I'm making that the Bible is true. Okay, and so it's speaking the truth about the condition of the heart of man. You go all the way back to the very beginning in Genesis chapter 3, you see where God created Adam and Eve, right? This is what I'm telling you Scripture says, whether you, you, know, you believe or disagree, whatever. But God created Adam and Eve. They chose to rebel against God and disobey God. And when they did that, sin came into the world. And so sin affected everything in the world, including the human heart, but also creation. Paul talks about that, how sin has affected all of creation in Romans chapter 8. But that sinfulness passed down to us. And so the Bible is telling the truth of why this world is so messed up. Because there's sin in this world. And because people choose, rather than obeying God and doing the right thing, most of the time, they choose to do the wrong thing. Makes sense? I mean, I follow, but I don't know if I'm there with you. Because mm -hmm. that, that came with like a whole lot of like, now I gotta believe that there was like, you know, a Garden of Eden at one point. I gotta believe that there were only two human beings at one point. I gotta throw at evolution if this is meant to be taken literally. I mean, I usually take Genesis to be metaphorically. Right, and a lot of people do. Yeah. They do. You know, in fact, I went when I went to college at a Christian college, the very first day in Old Testament class, the professor came in and he says, we're going to begin studying Genesis chapter 12 from Genesis, the book of Genesis from chapter 12, because the first 11 chapters are nothing but a myth. Now, this was a Christian college. Mm, and after that was over with, I went to him, I said, you know, Dr. Lowe, it seems to me that Jesus didn't think they were a myth, because Jesus talked about these events in scripture as though they were true <laughs> and so you know here's the challenge here to this idea that they're a myth coming straight from Jesus who of course we believe to be the Savior the one who went to the cross and died for our sins <clears throat> but anyway makes sense um, kind of but I mean I, I understand the framework in which you're working in but sure yeah I can uh, I can't speak to anything in Genesis so that doesn't really Resonate with me. Gotcha. Other than like, you know, the, the, the allegory and all that stuff. Oh wow, we got a... Is this like town police? Sorry, I didn't mean to get distracted, oh, no, but there's... No, you're fine. This is the first time I've seen a horse out here on campus. <laughs> That's a big horse. Now here's the thing to test the truth, okay, and this is going to be probably... I know you probably got somewhere you, you need to go, but mm -hmm. is... The, what makes truth true? Is it whether it resonates with us or is truth something that is true regardless of whether it resonates with us or not. Mm -hmm. See that one, I used to have a, like a quick and easy answer to that, but lately I feel like it lies somewhere in the middle because of the whole postmodernist movement, mm -hmm. which I do, I see the value in it and that there is no empirical truth, right? There is no like one set of capital T truths Two plus there two is, is not four. There is like a, a collection. <laughs> no, no, I mean like that is a that's a mathematical truth. But right, even but it's in empirical. the realm of mathematics, right? Mm -hmm. People can construct their own mathematics, right? Like the whole like uh, cosine of pi is equal to zero, mm -hmm. right? Like somebody can make a system in which that is equal to something else. So you get like non utility in geometry, right? Mathematicians can invest. I wish they were in charge of my bank account that was overdrawn <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Listen, that's an entirely separate dimension. You got the wrong guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like there is something to be said about how there are some things that if we take them to be as capital T truth, society gets better. Society is held up by some big truth that we shouldn't or we should be hesitant to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. But 
I can't just say that there is only one truth and nothing but the truth, right? right. There are def there are many perspectives that can very influentially weigh on what we think of this truth. So essentially, you just took it from resonating with the individual to resonating with society. Is that what I'm getting? Um, so essentially, you're saying society agrees on these truths and therefore they're true, but does that make them true? Yeah. Um, yeah, only to a certain point, <laughs> only to a certain Because, right? I mean, the Nazis yeah. believed it was yeah. true for them to be able to kill the Jews, mm -hmm. right? Did that make it right? No. Right, right. We know it's wrong to kill a human being mm -hmm. because the Word of God is instinctively written in our hearts, according to Scripture. I would just take it to mean that it's fucked up to kill people. <laughs> well, it's right, too. Yeah, well, it's true. Yeah, very true. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. Well, anyways, it was lovely. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Daryl. Daryl. Yes, sir. It's good to meet you. Me. Let me share this with you here. There's a little card. Thank you. And we're out here usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so stop by anytime and, and okay. chat, man. All right. God bless.